Welcome to another episode of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast. I'm your brother, O God, from Hip Hop News Uncensored, and sitting across me is my co host. What up, what up, y'all? It's your man, Sam, and CEO of Viral Hip Hop News, and you're in the building for a very special edition of the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast on this Friday evening. We got a special guest in the building. We got Mo, the Monster Johnson, yeah. on the podcast. It's good with you, family. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm chilling. Life is good, man, you know. It's only one brother. I'm calling Mo the Monster Johnson, and that's the porn star. <laughs> Mo the Monster Johnson. Now, I, I mean, for those of you who don't know, man, let the people know who you are and what you specialize in. Uh, I, I'm not to, not to steal nobody's line, but I'm like Tyrone, you know, with your wife, Long Dick Style. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. So. We're all interested, man. How did you let's just start right at it, man? How did you get into the game uh, of pornography? I had a I was in LA for a little while and I was struggling and I never got into the game, but I was inquiring. And anything that I ever came across, they were trying to make me as a man do some wild shit that I wasn't ready for. So I was always interested as a man, like how y'all got into the game, man. So can you give us a little layout of how you got into the game? Um, you know, I think everybody's story is a little different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's a lot of ways that people done stumbled or walked into this adult lifestyle. Uh, Mine's kind of was always a passion. You know what I mean? I started dealing with music. I was uh, in the music industry at a very young age. And, um, you know, I think that was like the segment that kind of led me into the adult world. I think just with the similarities of, uh, you know, just random sexual encounters, one night stands, you know, a lot of traveling and stuff like that. And um, I think I, I think I finally decided to make the decision to like, you know, I would say if people take the leap of faith, um, probably was around uh, 2008. And um, I was dealing with a girl that was actually um, in the music industry and uh, we kind of had a fallout. And, um, you know, I tell people this now. It basically was a pride thing. You know, she tried to tell me I had a little Johnson. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I basically had to prove, you know, to her and myself and the rest of the world that uh, she was full of shit. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, she was part of it at the time that kind of gave me the striving force to push. Um, but I basically just started, man. You know, I had, I had a house full of women that was staying with me. And, um, you know, we needed, we ran out of things to do. You know, we was doing bachelor parties and, and things of that nature, undergrounds and things of that nature. And, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the girls, you know, they ain't loyal or they ain't consistent. And it was basically my choice to just say, you know what, y'all don't want to do this or y'all not doing this the right way. I'm going to show you how it's done. You know what I mean? And, um, I started filming, um, my first scene was actually, on the subway train in New York City, and um, at the time, at the time, it got posted up on uh, YouTube, and it was able to stay up there for a couple of months, and um, I got a, I got about a half a million views, you know. And at that time, you know, YouTube wasn't obviously what it is today, right? And um, you know that that led segue to a lot of people knowing about me, but not really putting the face to the name. And um, there was this this thing called Sexy Job, which was kind of like, uh, you know, like the monstersjob.com for the sex world. And, um, you know, this girl I was dealing with uh, in the music industry at the time, she took the first nude picture of me because, you know, I couldn't obviously, you know, be fully erect for another man to take the picture. Wow. So, uh, you know, once I had that picture, I posted it on that Sexy Jobs and, you know, the phone started ringing. Wow. Now, take us back to that, the subway. How did, how did y'all pull that off? Did you have to rent it? Or you just kind of just had an empty section, just got it in right there real quick and just did it? We started on Atlantic Avenue <laughs> out <of> Brooklyn <laughs> at the first stop, you know. But right. it, it, it happened to be, you know, it was like, you know, four or five in the morning. So... Okay. Nobody was on the train when we started, but as we started, you know, going towards Manhattan, yeah, the, the people was on there, and there wasn't no rental, you know. Cops would have came on, undercovers would have came on, and um, you know, we wouldn't went to jail. <laughs> Man, do you think that's why it popped the way it did? Maybe because it was the the element of oh shit, these motherfuckers on the train doing this shit. Yeah, I, I definitely think it was a shock factor, you know, and I think a lot of people wasn't expecting from the way it started 
that it was going to, you know, get to that to that level. So those who continue to watch it probably was like, oh, you know, word got around fast. You know, by that by that year uh, Thanksgiving, you know, a couple of my cousins had seen it. You know, and I'm sitting at the table with a bunch of my aunts and my pops, and um, <laughs> yeah, my cousin whipped the video out like, yeah, A train, A train. I'm like, huh? You know what I mean? So. <laughs> You know, that was like a two for one. That was my first scene, and that was the scene that you know half my damn family saw. Damn. You know, so it was kind of one of those things where it was like, well, if you know, you want to take this serious. I see you got a lot of views. You know, you better take it serious because it's definitely out there. You know, that 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 was my first scene. That was my welcome to the porn world. Right now, take a take us kind of like into the business for people who don't know. Um, how do you go about, I guess, finding a girl? Does somebody like? You know, somebody who runs the thing, like pick a girl, match people up, take us deep. You got to do like STD test and take us all into the world, man. And what, you know, from A to B on, you know, going through the porn star world with the different, you know, with a woman. Um, Basically, you know, nowadays with OnlyFans and everything else, it's so much easier, you know, and a lot yeah. of people have been saying this for years, self-included. You know, people hit me in the streets or hit me online or whatever. And they're like, yo, how do I get in the porn? I'm like, get a girl. You know, mm-hmm. if, if that, you know, if that's the genre you're going after, you know what I'm saying? Just get a girl. And, uh, you know, at this point, she don't even got to be hot. You know, just right. as long as she, you know, she's ready to do the deed and put the work in. You know what I mean? You're good to go. Um, with the testing, though. Uh, if you decide you want to take it serious, if you want to actually, you know, take it to that L.A. level, um, mm-hmm. you would have to get tested. Um, there's two standard testing places that most performers um, go to that's verified, um, you know, your, your picture, you know, or, or your, your agent, whatever. Um, most, all your information is documented and verified. It goes into like they call a pass system. So basically all over the world, any porn company can go into this system and pull not only your information up, but your history. So if you, you know, been dirty or been burnt or whatever, you'll have that whole two year, three year, however long you've been in the system history of your medical records. Um, that's the way that most most of the, the professional companies will take you serious because the test is very pricely. And if you if you show that type of dedication that you're willing to spend, you know, three three hundred dollars, you know, which is the current price with, with the COVID test included, you know, um, that kind of shows that you're serious about this. And, you know, you didn't just go to the doctor and get a doctor's test. Now, all of us throughout our lifetime, every man thought he was a porn star at some point or another, right? But the big leagues and the real the, the real game behind it and the, and the work that goes into it, I'm sure a lot of motherfuckers ain't ready for it. Talk about that. Like, a lot of people thinking they're ready for the business, but they ain't really ready for, like you said, the L.A., the big league type deal. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Like, when I when I first got to L.A., um, this had been about 2013. Now, I had already been in the game since 2009 at mm-hmm. this time. I already had shot about 400 scenes in New York. You know, I had uh, dubbed myself the porn king in New York. And because nobody else was doing it, you know, like outside of outrageous scenes, you know, I had a direct line to about 15 companies in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut area. And, you know, like I said before, my house originally had about five holes. Um, By my first year, they had switched into having like five porn stars around. Like, you know, some uh-huh. of them that was already known. Some of them was from Atlanta. Some of them was from, um, you know, Midwest. Some of them was from LA. And, you know, me and a couple of my buddies started this thing called the union, um, which was like brothers in pornography. So all of us kind of had our own little buzz and our own little females around us. And we all kind of like linked up together and we would come at companies with like a package deal. Like, you know what, you know, hire me and my boy and we got five girls or we got six girls that's, you know, available. And, you know, we was able to dominate the market. So, you know, moving forward, just to give you a, you know, backstory, moving mm-hmm. forward, going into LA, you know, I'm thinking I'm already the man. Like I already got this shit locked up. You know what I'm saying? And when I got there to AVN, 
you know, which some of y'all who don't know what AVN is, AVN is like the Grammys of porn. Right. And, um, you know, we got there and nobody knew who I was. Nobody in LA really, you know, Dang. knew who I was or took me Dang. serious. And the few that did was, you know, putting me on a, the level of being a, a, a high, a high end amateur porn star, but not really a professional. So, you know, the only way I was able to really get into the mix was I had to do a gangbang scene. Now, a gangbang scene, which I didn't know at the time, was like your intro, your introduction or your audition to the adult world. Because if you were in the mix with a big name porn star, because most you know big name girls is not gonna is gonna do the gangbangs opposed to the amateurs because. You know, obviously, it's a lot of work involved when they're dealing with multiple partners at one time, you know. Mm -hmm. So you get thrown with a girl that's already known, and then now it's like I'm working with guys that I might have seen already on, you know, on movies. So you get that whole shell shock of that element, and then now you're not in the comfort of being with your girl or nothing like that. So now you got the pressure of dealing with a girl you don't know or is a big name star. Plus, you got five or four other guys around you, and you know you got to keep your, your, you know, your man a thousand. Mm -hmm. So you know you you actually stand out, and um, you know the confidence that I had and the energy that I had going into it. That's what kind of made me stand out in those type of scenes because it really didn't matter how many guys was there. It was a matter of me performing with the girl and, you know, giving the best performance that I could give, you know. And eventually that had became a part of, you know, my, my signature of being like the king of gangbangs. Right. Now, how, like, talk about, like, you know, the websites they got, Pornhub, X Hamster, all those sites they got. How has that helped the business lately, like, with the emergence of, like, the Internet, you know, websites, people can go on pretty much for free? I mean, the, the tube sites, it's been a gift and a curse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know when Pornhub had first came out, a lot of the videos was posted up there, not by the actual production companies, but actually put up there by fans. You know, this is my favorite scene. I pay for it. I download it. You know, right. I'm going to throw it up there. And it had become so big that they started monetizing it with ads and things of that nature mm -hmm. to the point where some of the girls and some of the bigger companies got wise. And it's like, well, hold on. This video is getting a million views while we not, you know, while we not making money. So a lot of people started making their own accounts and it, it just blew up from there. You know, I, I think the same thing with like X videos as well. You know, not until probably in the last, I would say, uh, five to seven years, you couldn't even make money off of posting on x -Fields. x -Field was completely free. But same thing, once the advertisers and everything got involved, you know, now there's all kind of uh, money and sponsorships and, you know, things that, that was able to help enrich um, the money for the performers, you know, to now where you have, you know, OnlyFans and, and some of these other sites where it's like, yeah, we got a free site, but then we got a pay site, you know, back, mm -hmm. back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, for you to even have uh, an online site, you had to go through directly with CC billing, which then required credit checks and identification because now you're dealing with people's personal credit card information directly. Right. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like that because also, you know, you take the risk of putting your information, somebody could scam you, right. you know? So a lot of, or, or some people just didn't want to have that type of, you know, 900 or a porn saw or a porn site, whatever on their credit card bill directly you know, right. for whatever reasons, you know. So I think those two sites, they help as far as with marketing. Mm -hmm. And they also kind of help for those who didn't have the ability to actually start a full website on their own. Now, let me ask you, you went to L.A., going to the big leagues. How was you perceived as a brother in the industry? Because we all know about Hollywood and music and things like that. Was it any different in porn? 
it was it was the it was the opposite from what most people experience might be in entertainment. I think with interracial, you know, not not being um, as glorified as it might be today. Right. You know, at that time, it was kind of like we was all being depicted as thugs and gangsters. You know, and a lot of a lot of the performers, you know, was that like they came out of jail. You know what? I'm gonna do some porn. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So a lot a lot of the people I ran into was actually, you know, uh gangsters or you know, ex ex cons and shit like that. And they took it for what it was, you know, whether they was, you know, BBC, like they always say, you know, or they was just average, average Joe size, you know, it was just to having a whole bravado and having the energy to be able to do a scene, you know, thirty to forty five minutes straight of intense fucking and you know obviously not pop early or you know you know not being able to keep your shit up you know right. so like that that was that was the kind of thing where it's like if you could do two scenes or three scenes back to back to back without messing up shit they'll they'll roll out the red carpet for you mm. you know what i'm saying and, and a lot of people a lot of people were shocked at that because it's like one minute you know i want to do it I do three do three good scenes, and now I'm in the mix. Now my phone is buzzing. You know, now I got Bang Bros and this company and that company, you know, knocking down your door to get you because you know the whole thing is they want to lock you in. If you could do the job, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, male performers, black or white, um, don't realize how much the industry needs them, opposed to they need the industry. You know what I'm saying? Because you're looking at it as this is what you want to do. But in reality, you know, the life, the lifetime of a male performer, definitely in years, even though money wise, the females get it all day. But as far as years and time, you know, you got guys that have you know, been around for 15, some even, you know, 20 years plus and cause continuously have a job because obviously, you know, women get older especially in front of that camera, you know, mm -hmm. it shows a lot faster because they are primarily the subject, you know, of the attention. Right. So right. I mean? Now talk about the the actual like performance. Did it take you a while to kind of adjust to like, you know, people actually with cameras watching you fuck this bitch. Did it take you a while to get used to that? Because normal setting people's in a room with a girl by itself, they don't want anything or whatever. So how, how did you adjust to that? Um, for me, I think I always kind of was a performer in my own right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think, right. you know, a lot, a lot of my boys used to make jokes and be like, yeah, they was following you before Twitter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just, you got to have that confidence. You got to have that bravado where it's like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to stand here and I'm going to live most people's, you know, nightmare. You know, when you think about it, if you ever watched like the original um, Wonder Years, you mm -hmm. know, that was always his biggest nightmare to be standing, you know, naked in a room full of people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you have to kind of have that in you. You know what I mean? You can't you can't create that. You can't fake that. You know what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of guys fail, you know, because once that camera comes on, no matter how much big shit you talking or how many girls are screaming your name, you know, when it's just you and them, when that camera come on, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a whole nother light. You know, and you got to be able to separate yourself. Like at that point, this ain't a really about sexual. This is about finances. This is a business here. You know, you got the sound man. He need a check. The right. director need his check. You know what I'm saying? The, the people you house you rented or studio you at, they want their check. You know, the director got to get their check. And, and the girl, most of all, want her check. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it becomes where... If if you can't, you know, perform within the first fifteen minutes, you know, you can get pulled off a set, and that'd be the end of your career. And if you don't complete the scene, you don't get paid. Mm. So you could be humiliated or humiliate yourself, you know, yeah. and don't even get paid. And some of sometimes it, the scene won't even see the light of day. But depending on how much the people, you know, in the production like or don't like you, they might put the shit out anyway. Just because they spent money on it. Yeah. 
And you still won't get paid for that. And you still won't get paid. Ooh. I mean, you look like a straight idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I, like, for me in the beginning, the pride of that alone right. was like, yeah, I ain't going to have me on camera looking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. How's that affected your, your personal love life when it comes to that? Do you is it is it work now, like even having sex with women, or do you still can you still separate the two? Um, it took me, I ain't gonna lie, it took me a very long time, yes. you know what I mean? Like, especially being out in L.A., you know, and I had got a little star status and, you know, a couple of females knew who I am, you know, right off the gate. Or I might have dealt with a girl and her, fr her friends might have knew who I was or she might have just happened to Google me, you know, and everything will pop up. You know, it changes things, you know what I mean? Like, I would say, like 50 Cent said, you know, if a female see my Johnson before she meet me, it's like I don't got a facelift. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I, I done had situations where girls done met my Johnson before they done met me, where it's like they just walk straight down, jump to their knees and be like, damn, let me just see it. Let me just put it in my mouth. I'm like, damn, baby, like, I don't even know your name. <laughs> Right, you know what I mean, and it it gives you that you know where if you're if you know and a lot of guys you know and I can't say that hundred percent that's how they feel, but I could tell from a lot of guys' actions you know it gives them that kind of uh, I would say uh, uh, superiority uh, complex to where they start thinking women are just you know meat or women are, are just around for sexual pleasure. You know, you lose sight of reality where it's like you know every girl you see or every girl around you, you didn't see that naked or the seen yours or someone else dick in the mouth. You know what I'm saying? It right. it changes your perception. Yeah. So you know, going back to your original question, it's like. It took me a long time when it comes to dating. Like I tried to date porn chicks, you know, that that didn't work. Um, right. I tried to date a lot of civilians, but the jealousy and things like yeah. that. So then, you know, that didn't work. Or even if not jealous, they, you know, if they understand it and respect the lifestyle, they don't really take me serious because it's like, you know, I'm looking, I'm looked upon by them like a male thought. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, you done fucked all these bros. <laughs> what make me special? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You done had the best girls, all wild, kind of crazy orgies and shit. How does how do I know that this is real? You know? So, you know, after I would say after about um, cause I've been in the game for 14 years. So the first four years I actually, you know, got booed up with a shorty that was a ride or die type. And she was also in the business. And, um, you know, between me leaving her back in New York and going to LA and, and then going to Europe and Japan and, you know, shooting all over the world, you know, I ended up coming back to her, you know, just probably with, I would say in the last maybe six months. I ended up me and her ended up actually like being back in communication and now you know we back together again. But it's like, you know, as far as with a relationship, it's very difficult in this world, in this porn world, you know what I'm saying? For male or female, you know what I mean? Right, right now, has there ever been a, a time where, you know, director or anybody brought a scene to you or something that you didn't want to do that you turned down and said, nah, I'm not doing no shit like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. plenty of scenes that I turned down. Um, you know, most of them probably was, you know, more the gay, the gayish type scenes or uh, what they, they had. A, they got a thing called like cuck hole where, you know, yeah. it's usually would be like a white man. And you're like banging his daughter or his wife. You know what I'm saying? And I've I've heard some of them gone as as far as, you know, the guy making the other man actually suck him off or something like that as some form of humiliation. Right. Um, the farthest I've, I've probably gone with it is um, they've, they've made the guy like eat the nut or whatever. But I, you know, I, I had told directors, you know, like, listen, I don't even want to be in the room when that shit go down. I don't even want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. When I had, when I kind of seen that some directors was actually like trying to use that as a segue to get you into doing some bisexual activity, you know, I was when I was just like, I, right, you know, I had to cut the faucet on those type of scenes. Like, you know what, I'm good on that because that's not the route that I'm trying to go. That's not the brand, you know, that I'm trying to push. Um, there's also like DP scenes. Um, 
they're very, very big out there in Europe and definitely out in L.A., you know, and the way um, I think they kind of market it to more of the, the top tier stars is this is the elite. You know, now you're talking mm-hmm. different with a gangbang. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing the gangbang and you got five dudes and, you know, your man's on this side and you on the other side and y'all playing the Chinese scissors, you know what I mean, or the Chinese finger trap, you know what I mean? That's cool. You know what I mean? But when you're doing a DP, you know what I'm saying, and you got another man fucking stomach hitting you in the chest while you smashing because he in the ass and you want a pussy, you know what I'm saying? It's a different level of comfortability and closeness, you know what I'm saying, that you have to mentally put a lot of shit on the side, you know, and that's, like I said, that's how they market it, where it's like, well, only the elite of the elite can do this because, you know, even a guy that could knock down 20 girls by himself, you put him in a scene like that, he ain't going to keep wood because it's, it's not the same experience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like you, said, you got to know how to separate, like I said, the personal from the business because, you know, homie don't want to fuck you. He there for a check like you there for a check, but your own insecurities or your own uncomfortabilities will knock you out that position. You know what I mean? So, like, I got a lot of offers for those scenes um, in in America and in Europe. And, you know, after a certain, you know, certain point in time, it's like, you know, you're doing those type of scenes every day. It's just like, yeah, okay, now nah, I'm good on this, too. You know what I mean? Talk about, one, if you can, one of, like, the best experiences you ever had. Like, if, we, if it's a porn star, we know about, like, yeah, that shit was the truth, my guy. If I could take you into that world, that was the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think the fun part was, like, I would say two different types of scenes. I think the, my funnest scene I ever had, I think I had, like, six girls on one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, at that point, <laughs> You got a girl sucking on your toes. You know what I'm saying? You got girls on your neck, on your ear. You know right. what I mean? Two on your balls. You just like, fucking take me. You know? <laughs> it's Damn. a whole nother, you know, it's a whole nother experience. Um, I think that was, you know, that experience. And I've, I think I've done about two scenes like that. One of them, it wasn't all, like, against me. It was, like, uh, a couple of them. They, like, it was, like, an orgy. But it was, like, you know, five girls, four guys, but there was moments that, you know, you might get two to three, sometimes four of them at one time on you, you know what I mean, as I was just going through rotation. So, like, that same, like I said, same type of feel, you know, anytime you got more than three girls on you, you know, that's a whole nother oh, yeah. experience, you know what well, I mean? I and, um, right. <laughs> 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 you know, you got yeah, you, know, you gotta be cool as a fan, you know what I mean? It's nothing, it's nothing, baby. It's what we do, you know. But um, yeah, I, that and then the the second type of scenes was like the feature scenes, like the big production scenes. Um, you know, like I've I've worked for Black dot com a couple of times. You know, they definitely treat you like a real actor. You know, you come in there, they got wardrobe laid out. You know, got you got got the whole drink table for it's not alcoholic drinks, but you know, like if you record, you know, you guys been on a regular sound stage or or backstage at a concert. You know, they got the food, they got the everything you can imagine. You know, laid out there for you. You know, pick you up with limousines and all that, drop you back off. You know, so I like that type, you know, type of production. Um, I did one scene um, for this Japanese company. They actually flew me all the way out to Japan for two days. And um, then they flew me to Papua New Guinea, which is like a small indigenous country in between uh, Japan and Australia. Mm-hmm. And um, they literally had me like in the jungle, you know, <laughs> shooting with some joint, yeah, on the top Man. of the mountain. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. literally, with no cell phones, no third world. It was like straight yeah. third world country. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, at that point, like, I had to actually like learn the culture because I was like with an actual chief, you know, of that yeah. land. Like, it was only three people that owned that whole island. It was him, yeah. his cousin, and then the government. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they hit. He was the the most indigenous of all because they followed a lot of the traditions still. So like, mm-hmm. I had to do the movie and everything with like the full 
face painting, you know what I mean, headdress on, you know, the everything. So when I would walk through the town or the, you know, the village, you know, a lot of the kids was like crying and shit because they thought like the the real chief died. Like, who the fuck is he? Like, you know, mm-hmm. it's like driving through the hood with Obama's car when he was the president. You know, people were like, what the hell going on out <laughs> yeah. here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like. I had those type of experiences with the game too. You know, I think like like that's the beauty. You know, I look at overall of my 14 years in the game where it's like, you know, I know a lot of people just kind of stuck with the urban market. They could be like, yo, I fuck Pinky and I fuck this one and fuck that one. You know, I fuck Pinky too. But at the same time, I also was able to take that shit to another level, you know, where a lot of other performers um, weren't able to to even get there, you know what I mean. So, so we got got to ask you about Pinky, man. Everybody wants to know how how was that pussy, man? How oh, was that? If man. guys that want to know that, is it worth it? Like, oh man, I mean, I call <laughs> I call her towards the end of the career. I mean, I mean, okay, not you know, not to not to toot my own horn, you know what I mean. But I think after I had did the Howard Stern show, uh, Pinky was already kind of scouting me for mm-hmm. about two years. But okay. she wasn't sure. And I think, like, once I did the Howard Stern show and, and everybody was giving me a lot of credit for that shit, then she was like, you know what, I'm going to run with you. And um, she put me in her male lead talent uh, roster. And I was able to hold it down for about five years uh, working with her. And, um, you know, the first scene, I wasn't even supposed to do an actual sex scene with it. It was supposed to just be a blowjob scene. It was going to be uh, three guys. And uh, one of the guys didn't show. Thank you, Chris Schrokes. Um, He didn't actually show. So she was like, well, her doing two guys was something that she'd done before. It was nothing major. And um, she just came up with this random idea. She was like, so since I never fucked you, Mo, how about I fuck you? And then, you know, I'll suck the other the other two guys off. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I did that scene with her. And then I, after that, you know, we killed it. And I think I did about two more scenes with her. But it was, like, more of her kind of, like, setting me up with another girl but she'll come in like suck me off or whatever before because mm-hmm. her big thing is about you know wearing the condoms so you know she'll do she'll do like head without a condom but she definitely wasn't doing no sex scenes with a, without a condom at that point when i got with her and um i actually was um like one of her last if not the last scene that she was in before she kind of went all the way retired Right, right. Now take us back to um your lawsuit against I think it was uh DF Productions. Take us back to that mm-hmm. situation where um you know it was a few years ago it was going crazy doing you know, headlines and all that. What happened in that scene, man? And um what was the result of the lawsuit? Well, you know, let's just say it, it's legal documents where I can't you know go into everything about that. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But um you know it was just a situation where. Jack, like you asked earlier, it was something that I didn't want to do. Right. And they basically forced it on me to the point where it was like, you know, what's the point of asking me if y'all y'all already had this shit planned out anyway? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I think like at that at that moment, I I kind of realized that no matter how far I came in the game, mm. you know they still felt you a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And that's, you know what I mean? And that's the, that's the nut and bolt of it. You know what I'm saying? Like everything else that happened after that, you know, with the other male performers trying to beef with me and, you know, everybody talking, oh, I was a rapist and I was an asshole and I was this and that. You know, that shit was all, like my man say, um, you know, working for the plantation, you know, or cooning for the plantation. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, well, he he want to make a stand, but who the fuck is he to make a stand? We've been doing this shit for years, and we ain't never had a problem. And I get that. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people got kids. A lot of people got budgets. A lot of people live above their means. And, you know, they feel that this is the only way they're going to make that type of bread without beating somebody in the head or selling drugs. Mm-hmm. So, 
you know, who am I to try to down talk or downplay the industry that they love, you know, in their way, you know, and that's where a lot of the drama and the bullshit had came from. But, um, you know, like I said, what was written in the newspapers was real. You know what I'm saying? My story 10 years from now won't change. 20 years from now won't change. You know what I'm saying? I just don't want to, you know, open you guys or myself to any legal action. You know what I'm saying? From mm-hmm. the company. But, um, you know, directors was fired. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Certain things certain things happen behind the scenes that, you know, nobody in the industry going to really talk about. But those that know, know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I done changed. I done changed a lot of shit out there, even if I don't get the recognition or don't even get the work behind it. You know, reality is, you know, you'll never hear another black performer, male or female, called out of their name during the scene unless they 100 percent consent to it. You know, what I mean, and that and that ultimately was the goal was, you know, don't don't give me the illusion that we all in this together when reality, you know, what I'm saying y'all, y'all using my images and likeness for y'all to make a bag and y'all really don't care how I'm displayed to the world. Mm. Would you say that event? I don't want to say blackballed you. Did it did it affect your career? Let's put it that way. Oh, I mean, of course, of course, it affected me. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot, a lot of companies just don't want headaches in general. Mm-hmm. So they're like, you know what, you a cool dude, but you know we just don't want the drama. You know what I mean? A lot of, you know, sad to say, sometimes you know with all the people claiming that they woke or whatever the case may be. You know, white people stick together, man, a lot better than we do. You know, and it's sad that that's what it is sometimes, but it is. So, you know what I mean? Like, I could be looked at as a pariah um, for saying what, what's the truth or was saying what, what what was obviously, you know, uh, I, I was just, I was, what's the word I want to use? Um, ec- ec- not, uh, not ethnicity, but um, Alex. that damn ethics. Okay. There you go. Mm-hmm. The ethics. You know what I'm saying? Like it's certain it's certain ethics that that we have as 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 performers. You know, what I mean, as men, as women, and you know, with porn. You know, it's that that situation where you know, if you're doing porn, they assume that you don't have any morals. You right. know, so. It's like to try to make a stand for something, you know, outside of dealing with the gay and lesbian community. It seems like in porn, you really don't have no, you know, no, no, no place to stand. You know what I mean? Like if a black woman was to say, you know what, I only want to do black men and I don't want to do white men, her career would probably go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if a white woman is like, you know, I don't want to do black guys, she'll be looked at on a different level where they will actually praise her. They will actually give her more work. They will actually keep her around mm-hmm. longer because that's the business model. It's it's already a part of the custom where it's like, okay, when you come in the game as a white woman, it's like, all right, you could do girl, girl or solo. Then you move up to boy, girl. Then you move up to gang bang. If that's what's in your, you know, your, your abilities, then you get to that fork in a row where it's like, okay, do you want to do anal or do you want to do black guys? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and a lot of girls do both, but they'll go one or the other first. You know what I'm saying? To where, you know, now you have some of these companies like Black and, you know, so on and so forth that glorifies it and made it, you know, a big deal. To where now girls is finding out, hold on, I can make ten thousand or four thousand for doing an exclusive, you know, black guy scene. I, I'm gonna wait it out. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna wait for black to call me, and then I'm gonna do my first iteration. And then it's like, cause they know, you know, after they fuck black guys, sad to say, this is not my way of thinking. This is the way of you know the industry itself, and you know, right. obviously the world because. You know, I, I do appreciate DL Hughley and BET and a lot of the newspapers and so on and so forth that kind of stepped up and, and spoke on it, you know, the racism element and all that. But then you got people like Charlemagne and them and, and, um, that went on and was like, oh, well, if I nut on her face and shit on her, then it's, it's all good. No, it's not good. If you right. doing your radio show, somebody coming in and disrespect you, they disrespect you. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. So when you got a whole industry that's already prone to have no respect for the black man, and one says, you know what, I ain't them, this ain't that, it was new to them. Fuck they head up. They didn't understand it. You know what I'm saying? Because we, as black men, should have been all gracious, almighty. I'm fucking a white woman. This is the best thing in the world. You know what I mean? But in reality, you know what I mean? They pussy stink just like the rest of the bitches do. You feel me? Like it is what it is. You yeah. know? <clears throat> Man, did you did you have an opportunity to hear Mano? What he said the other day? No, nah, I actually didn't. You didn't. I, I, I'm gonna get your opinion if you if you want to speak on this, being as though you're um I'm gonna play it for you real quick and then give me your opinion okay. on what he said about sex. So wrong. It's so wrong. I'm going to tell you right now. I've oh never talked about this. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I like to be like a runaway slave. Okay, no. Man, oh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like to play like a runaway slave. Okay. I like to play like a, diso a disobedient slave with a white woman. So tell me, like, what you say. Yes, Max. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, I've, it's, it's, two, it's, it's, it's two of them. Like, it's like me getting whooped, right? You get whooped? It's like, I like, I play like you whip it. But most of them don't want to play like that. This is this. Yeah, I was gonna say, what white woman goes along with this? They don't want to play like that. They don't. Okay. Want, this is my. It's like, listen, <laughs> you're gonna act like your master's, your your master's uh, husband, uh, wife, wife, and I'm the runner. And I just got whooped by master. Uh, uh, okay. uh, but the whole time you've been really. You know, you've been you like me, anyway. you've been eyeballing me. Oh, uh, this sounds like some freaky porn. Right, this is some freaky shit. And then yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come all sweaty, right? Just finished getting whooped, and you're gonna say, "No, Billy Joe, no, no, Billy Joe, no." <laughs> Nas is not gonna like it. He's not gonna like it. That's a you know, you know, you know, like, This is a that's pretty much it, right there. What do you think about that, man? You know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> You know, shout out, shout out to Mano. You know, what I me, mean? I actually met Mano a few times. Um, one while I was in the music industry, um, I used to work for Little Kim directly, and okay. um, he was one of the people that you know she bought in the game. So I did promote his music back in the day. And um, irony, you know, years later, um, I actually met Mano on a more personal setting because his cousin, um, rest in peace, D was. Is actually one of the guys that was in my, um, you know, union brothers in pornography, and um, I had the, you know, I had the pleasure of actually chopping it up and meeting him, and um, we had similar conversations about our crazy sexual exercises, you know, and I had to kind of like shut him down because he was acting like, you know, he was a bigger porn star than me at the time, you know what I mean? Like, which which happens with most. You know, I think hustlers and dudes that's in the underground lifestyle, you know what I'm saying, you know, do what they do, per se. And, um, you know, if you're getting money and you fucking bitches every day, you know, you feel you're you you, you, you a porn star in your own right as well. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, sad to hear him say that because I do know he went through a certain situation where he was falsely accused of raping a white porn chick. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I know her, and I know that chick too, and she's a dirtbag bitch. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So right. the idea, you know, that that's, you know, that's his personal preference. Again, that's his personal preference. That's not his job. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how he may feel about that is, you know, that that's on him. You know, right, uh, some, some guys like that shit. Some guys like they girl call him a nigga and all that, and they cool with that. No, all that, hey, to each they own, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. if you step into this world, you know what I'm saying, and it's a job, right. it, it, it's not me in the privacy of my home deciding to let her, you know, degrade me in that way because that's some some fetish or twisted fetish of mine. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I done dealt with girls that's regular, you know, civilian type chicks, and they like, oh, I watch all your gangbang movies because I got rape fantasies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wow. So you got to look at it for what it is. Like at the end yeah. of the day, everybody can have their own twisted personal fantasies. So if that's what that man like in the comfort of his home with his white woman, hey, yeah, yeah. have fun, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, yeah. me personally, I would never take a role like that. I would never do a role like that. And I damn sure wouldn't promote a role like that because of the fact that I know that that shit has 
so many different undertones in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I seen something a few months back where it was a black dude and he did the whole proposal to his wife with that same type of, you know, persona, slave mentality, but we getting married, you know? So God knows what the fuck kind of role playing they was doing. You know what I'm saying? That you posting that shit up on your social media with you in chains proposing, looking wow. like a slave, you know what I'm saying, to your wife yeah. or your future wife, you know what I mean? A lot of motherfuckers is twisted. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot, a lot of black men, like I said, a lot of black people put us back 10 years, you know, or 20 years or 30 years or shit. In that situation, 100 years, you know what I'm saying? It's just <laughs> that it, it, if that's what you do, that's what you do, you know what I mean? But this ain't that. I I I I I pull my pants down with my dick out for a bag, and so if y'all gonna try to destroy my brand, then nah, nah, I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm not cool with it. But again, like I said, I don't have no problem with Mano to each their own. You know what I mean? But me, that ain't me. That ain't my thing. That's what's up. Um. That's all I got, man. That's all I got. You go ahead, yeah, man. this has been dope, man. We definitely appreciate your time. We ain't gonna hold too much more of it. Mo's the Monster Johnson on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast, brother. Definitely appreciate all your candid and honest uh, answers to all of our questions, man. We definitely appreciate the insight, brother. Lead, let the people know what you got going on now in the future, and let them know where they can find you. Okay, um, I got I got a big movie coming up. I can't really speak on it all the way, but it's definitely you know I, I will be returning to LA at some point um, in later fall of, of this year. Um, it'll be a, it's definitely going to be something. Um, you know, if you guys are following me on my social media, um, you guys as well. Uh, you know, under uh, hip hop, you know, if y'all guys stay tuned. Um, I definitely probably will want to come back on and probably for both that, you know, but sure. like I said, it's, it's, it's definitely a big, it's definitely a big production. It's going to turn a lot of heads uh, mm-hmm. when it does drop, but I just, at this time, I can't give you more details, um, but that's pretty much a big feature role that I'm, I'm going to be doing. Um, outside of that, you know, you can always check me out on my Twitter, which is M O E underscore T H E underscore monster. Um, you can check me out on my X videos page, which is official Mo the Monster. Um, you can check me out on my OnlyFans, which is official Mo Johnson. And on my Instagram, I'll be on there, but I done got you know taken down about six times. I done had over 100,000 followers within mm-hmm. the six times. They done took it down. So at this point, it's just there to be there. But... Um, if you if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's D A Real Mo Monster. You know what I mean? And then always my website is motormonster.com. Definitely appreciate you, man. Motor Monster Johnson on the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast, man. Uh welcome back anytime, man. Definitely come over here when you want to promote your new film. And anytime you're welcome on the podcast, brother. Thank you. I appreciate y'all, man. Stay up, yo. All right, bro. Thank you. Well.